Hello there kind viewer, I'm assuming you're watching because you're incredibly wealthy and wish to donate a watch to a good cause. Me. Rather than make you guess, I thought it would simply be easier for me to provide a list of watches for you. So here it is, 10 watches I'd get if someone else was footing the bill. I thought I'd start things off with the $200,000 Breguet 7047, and there's two reasons why I'd rather spend someone else's money on this watch. One, because it's more than my mortgage, and two, because with 60% of the value turning to dust as soon as you peel the stickers off, it's not so much taking a bath on the price as it is a full spa weekend away complete with sauna and hot rock massage. The depreciation is so horrible it should come with its own support hotline. The five stages of grief could be be reappropriated as denying the purchase of the Breguet to your partner, getting angry at Abraham Louis Breguet's ghost for not forewarning you about buying a Breguet, bargaining with the Breguet retailer to take the Breguet back again, trying to keep your tears of regret off the Breguet because the water resistance is only 30 meters, and coming to terms with the fact that you might buy another Breguet as well. The thing is, a collapsing value even Greece would wince at doesn't stop this watch being unbelievably good. The subscription styling with the front mounted movement is achingly gorgeous, reminiscent of Breguet's original pocket watches, and the fact it gets the man's signature tourbillon alongside a fusey and chain is just peak watchmaking. Throw in some exquisite finishing and this is low-key one of the best watches available today. If you're going to go for high complication, I think the best way to approach it is twofold. First, choose perhaps the most underrated luxury watchmaker in the world, Chopard. The LUC collection from Chopard can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Patek Philippe every single day of the week and twice on Sunday. Forget for a moment that Chopard makes jewellery. Forget that watch they make that's got more loose bits than a French hatchback and focus on those three letters, L-U-C. The second step to this approach is not just to go for the biggest, baddest and bestest complication ever, any old billionaire can do that, but to get the one that does it better than all the others. You know how people describe minute repeaters as sounding beautiful and all that thanks to the different metals. Yeah, that's all nonsense. They all sound like ice cream vans compared to this. The Chopard LUC Full Strike Sapphire really does sound better. Imagine playing beer pong but with five carat diamonds and crystal champagne flutes. That's what the Full Strike Sapphire sounds like because it's got a full sapphire case and gongs with which to chime. Oh, and it'll cost you a mere half a million dollars. Never mind paying a grand for a Seiko, how about 350 grand? Because that's how much the Grand Seiko Kodo costs. Kodo isn't Japanese for to the power of 1.858, it means heartbeat, because that's all you're going to hear when you spend a third of a million on buying me this delightful Japanese watch. It's as though Grand Seiko doubled down in retaliating against Mr. Leonard, as if just to prove him so wrong he might become a physical impossibility. Grand Seiko even forgot to be inspired by nature because the Kodo doesn't just not have a fancy dial, it doesn't have a dial at all. What it has is detail. No doubt you've heard about the Constant Force Tourbillon, which all turns about the same axis on the lower half of the dial and whose rhythmic ticking gives the watch its heartbeat name. But you've probably been too bewildered by that to notice much else. Things like the polished tip on the hour hand so it's easier to discern from the minutes. Or that the titanium outer case has a platinum inner case to contrast light and dark. There's a cheeky power reserve there too for the 50 hours of Constant Force power which has been tested for accuracy over 34 days. Trouble is there's only 20 in the world, but I'll let you figure that out. I'm a glass half full kind of person, so whilst the unfortunate postponement of the 2023 Only Watch auction means there's potentially money not going to sick kids, it does mean the opportunity to own the H. Moser collaboration with MBNF, the streamliner Pandemonium, is still possible. No one in history knew they needed a tiny panda DJ banging out tunes on the gongs of a minute repeater until these two legendary watchmakers showed us we did, and they were right. This watch is the ultimate crossover episode between Moser streamliner case and MBNF's legacy machine suspended balance. And yes, it's easier to read Latin than it is the time on this watch, but that's hardly the point. When there's a minute repeater tucked up inside there, reading the time is for losers. Sunday mass, funerals and other moments of silence are all to be improved by that little panda and his two massive hammers. 
You know what Arlung and Zona are like when they get the bit between their teeth. They're the ones that stopped Monopoly being fun at Christmas. The ones that point out why the plot doesn't work in the middle of a movie. Given half a chance, and Langer would happily rearrange your furniture to make the room flow better. The annoying thing is, they're right. And so when it comes to the most legendary complication of all, the minute repeater, it pays to see exactly how these guys go about it. It's not just the minute repeater itself that gets the Langer touch, although it has indeed had the Langer touch. Where most minute repeaters would, on the lower numbers, take a long pause while you wait through what might still be chimes if it were five to midday, the Richard Langer just gets on with it. No mucking about. All the pauses are skipped and the silence is filled with the sweet, sweet sound of gongs reverberating through platinum. But oddly enough, the most impressive aspect isn't just that it chimes, but that it can do so whilst you wash your hands. Most minute repeaters do as well in water as a hunk of cesium. However, this one is water resistant to 20 meters, meaning you can wear your limited to 20 pieces, $400,000 minute repeater without a care in the world. If these watches are a bit too expensive, then you can also treat yourself to a selection of my merch, available below the video, or perhaps one of my books, linked in the description. Thank you. Since you've very kindly offered to pay, I'm going to take full advantage of that and make a request for something I'd never considered even considering spending my money on, a Jacob & Co. My eyes have a love-hate relationship with the brand's esoteric watches. On the one hand, they hate them for being an assault on taste so egregious I think it might be a war crime. But on the other, they really are a bit cool. Let's be real, we like many of these watches because our inner child is still very much in command, and our inner child would have loved to own something as crazy as an Astronomia before we grew up and got all old and boring. So here's my compromise. Instead of buying me the Astronomia watch, how about the table clock instead? It's like a blown up version of the not very realistic, but still cool depiction of space of the Astronomia. Yes, it's as accurate to physics as an episode of Bugs Bunny, and it was probably drawn from the memory of a third grade science class, but the way all the bits go round and round is stupidly fun. And instead of the big old diamond, which was ultimately the booger in the burger for me, it gets a real piece of meteorite representing itself before it became a meteorite and was still an asteroid. All that floats over a starry sky of aventurine, and that's not even the best bit. The clock will cost you just a fraction of the watch's price at a mere $150,000. <laughs> The main reason why food in a fancy restaurant tastes better is because you know it took up a lot of people's time to make. In McDonald's, the people cooking, I won't call them chefs for legal reasons, can be divided into about one person per 10,000 meals served, whereas in a posh place, the ratios are reversed. It's going to taste great when at least five people have been involved in preparing your soup. That's why the Grubel Forcey handmade one is on my wish list. It's not like Grubel Forcey's standard fare is the fast food of watchmaking, but the handmade one kind of makes it feel like it is. Watches today, even the really expensive ones, almost entirely start life within the clutches of a machine. CNC machining technology has allowed watchmakers to craft the raw parts of any watch with relative speed and ease, leaving the skilled human stuff for the niceties like finishing, and sometimes not even that. You didn't think Rolex was making a million watches a year by hand, did you? That's where the handmade one slows things down a bit. It's said that each one takes around 6,000 hours to produce, and that's why only two or three are made every year, and why each costs almost a million. The gotcha is that the sapphire crystal, gaskets, jewels, and mainspring aren't made by hand, but you can't win them all, especially when it takes eight hours to make just a single screw. Back when I was a little girl, I had a dream, and that dream was to spend millions on a watch that would make me the de facto princess of Unicorn City. And now that dream is in your hands, because the Richard Mille RM88, or $3.5 million of it, could be mine. I could read the spec sheet and relay that information to you, but it seems a bit pointless. I already know the case is made from marshmallow and the strap from gumdrops. I even know the jewel bearings are lubricated with fairy tears and the power reserve lasts forever and ever and ever and ever. This is a magical watch filled with hope and leprechauns and I want it more than anything in the world. And I'll wear it to the ball and then you'll see. 
I want the Ferdinand Burr 2 chronometer FB 1RS.6 because I always thought I'd make a good steampunk airship captain. It's a quarter of a million dollars. The last watch was a very difficult choice for me. I was going to choose the MBNF LM101, but I realised that that's the watch I'm going to buy for myself when I sell the house and move into my car. And this is supposed to be the watch I buy with your money. So I let my hair down a bit, gently of course so more of it doesn't fall out, and decided on a different MBNF, the HM8 Mark II. The HM8 has been through a series of visual updates that in my mind plays back like a try-on montage in any movie about weddings. But here we are, coming towards the end of Act 2, and I think we have a winner. Inspired by the twin buttresses of such desirable automobiles as the 918 Spider, it cheats you into thinking it looks great by taking advantage of a hack a lot of men, and some women, seem to have. A preference for two voluptuous forms of equal size sat next to each other in a pair. I especially like it in melon green. Constructed from a made-up material called carbon macrolon, which makes it approximately 7.48 times cooler, the HM8 Mark II is the surprising bargain of the mix at a barely noticeable $78,000. So although I'd be a little disappointed you didn't think I deserve more, I would also understand if you wanted to choose this one. So there you have it, the 10 watches I'd happily let you pay for. Which will you also buy yourself to celebrate my new watch that you bought me? Let me know down in the comments. And please, now it's getting colder, remember that it's quicker to heat your car up by setting the temperature to max than it is to leave the climate control to do it for you. Goodbye. Still here? Watch this video next.